Walter and Niall. Thank you, Walter and Niall, bought me this Bible. Wow. That's very sweet. We're on. Hello. <laughs> uh, how are you all today? Um, we took the little uh, microphone off because yesterday we were having issues and somebody said they could hear us better without it. So I think that's what we're going to do from here on out, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matthew 26, 31. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got rid of the, oh, I thought you had it. Oh, you I, I, I'm going to. Okay. Let, let, let me just give you, an, I, I, the reason I want to bring this up today is because there's a thousand people that want me to get rid of this thing. <laughs> they keep asking to throw it away and I keep keeping it, so I, I need to get rid of it. But you remember that beautiful plant? It used to be really nice, and this sweet woman who passed away, bless her heart, she gave it to me. And uh, so, anyway, this is the plant, and while we were all gone. Oh, they can't see it. I, I'm going to move oh, it over. Okay. While we were all gone, thank you. <laughs> While we were all gone um, away, um, you know, this plant was left in the sanctuary where we used to do this, and so nobody knew it was there, and it didn't get watered. So this is what it looks like now. It's pretty yuggy, right? Well, I I wanted to use it for an object lesson before I throw it away because this is what happens to us. Truly, this is we we die. We, you know, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And um, and this is what we look like when we get watered and we take our word and we do that stuff. Watch this. Hang on one sec. <laughs> this is what we look like when we're nice and watered and beautiful and doing great. Look at all those peppers on that pepper plant. Isn't that beautiful? Mm-hmm. So, look, this one, this pepper plant replaced the other one. Somebody bought it for me. They were sweet. So, look. Now I can throw that away <laughs> because people keep asking me to throw it away so that I can throw it away. But the thing I want us to learn today and to pray, pray about is um, I, I just want us, to, I just want us to, to realize that for those of us who are believers in Christ, and I can't imagine, to be honest, that anybody would be listening to us that's not. Um, we only do things that we think have some merit or some benefit in our life. And non-Christians, I, I mean, they, they could do a lot more with their time besides listening to two old men, you know, talk about the Bible. But, you know, maybe somebody Speak is. Speak for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> maybe somebody is not a believer. But God does use us. You know what I forgot yeah. to tell you was uh, on Wednesday night, Dave told me there's a guy, uh, a young guy he wanted me to meet. He's Jewish. He's from uh, a Jewish family. He doesn't really know what he believes. And he came in um, whatever day, Monday. And Dave just happened to be listening to the Sunday night thing at that point when I was talking about Judaism. Oh, yeah. And he left it on. And he said, and the, and the kid said, what's that? And he said, oh, it's this guy talking about it. And so, and he took the phone or whatever it was, he had on the speaker. And the whole time he cut his hair, the, he watched the whole thing. The kid wow, watched the whole thing. Wow, that's really cool. So God can use these yeah. things. So what I was saying, thank you for sharing that. What I was saying is that I want us t- to remember that you know, as believers in Christ, we, we see all kinds of things going on in our world politically right now, especially politically right now and in many other ways. And, and the thing that's going to keep you beautiful, growing fruit, <laughs> you know, doing all those things is, is really a deep relationship with Christ. About, about 4.30, between 4 and 4.30 yesterday, I don't remember exactly what time it was. I was I've been praying for some things and I was sitting at my desk and all of a sudden, it's like I felt everything was perfect. And it was like I was going through the struggle, going through the struggle, and I felt like that plant that I showed you earlier, the one that was dried up. And I've been feeling that way for a few days. And circumstances haven't changed for people. Uh, the ones that I'm praying for that have some issues in their life. But God showed me that you can trust him. And we all know that, but when we're going through stuff, it's really difficult. <laughs> it's really difficult for us to remember that. So today, I just want you to remember that no matter what you're going through, there's going to be a time when God says it's the appointed time. You remember, I know I don't want to talk about the end time stuff, yeah. <laughs> but he did say there's going to be a appointed time when I'm going to step in because you couldn't take it if I did. Well, he does that for us personally all the time. He does that for us in many ways. When things are tough for us, when things are difficult, he steps in and he makes a moment for us where we think things are just going to be perfect. You can trust me. I'm there. 
and I can't describe it. I can't explain it. I don't know. I mean, I wasn't doing anything differently. I, I didn't. I didn't buy that favor from God. Right. I, it just God it just showed me. up and said, "This is the way it's going to be. Don't worry. Don't worry about this. Don't because you're not supposed to worry about anything, right? Mm-hmm. Well, just because the Bible says not to worry about anything doesn't mean that we don't often worry about things, sure. right? Because yeah. we often do that. Yeah. So, so today. No matter what's going on in your life, I just want to give you that encouragement. No matter what's happening in your life, I want you to know that that God is God will show up if you keep praying and if you keep reading your Word and you keep relying on Him. Don't give up. Don't give up. God will show up, um, and there will be a time. <laughs> that's yeah. interesting, right? I just got a pop up ad for for age spots and i'm thinking i'm trying to talk here get out of there <laughs> anyway they're listening to us they know they, you said old men yeah 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 there you go <laughs> they, they may be listening to us um so so just trust christ that's that's the thing please just trust christ um you know our our lives can feel like that plant that's all dried up but god wants it to look like and feel like many most of our life he wants he wants us to understand really all of our life. He wants us to understand that we're like that pepper bush that's got all those beautiful peppers, all those different colors and all that greenery and everything's ready to everything's ready to be fine. So that's what I'd like for you to, to, to learn today. If you're going through something, just be patient, just wait, just trust and don't give up because God is on your side. And and you don't I know what none of us know why God tarries like that mm-hmm. in our life. Um but God knows, and God knows us better than we know ourselves. So he knows we need that. So, okay, do I trust him enough for him to give me what I need? And that means sometimes just waiting and maybe struggling with some things until he just shows up and says, it's going to be okay. And that's not the first time God's done that for me. But it was just a time that I re- that's so close to me because it was yesterday afternoon, and I just thought, okay, Now's the right time for us to talk about those plants and talk about that mm-hmm. relationship and, and that kind of stuff. It's like it's like how God shows up. Billy just gave us an illustration of that, how God shows up. This young Jewish man shows yeah. up. And he, he wasn't on the, his schedule or anything, and he, he chose to listen to yeah. that at that point. He walked in right at that point, at that time. Yeah, and, and, it, and it ministered to that young man. So, right. so see, that we don't know what God's doing. We cannot tell, <laughs> but we do know that he's doing something, and we have to trust that. Anyway, what, yeah. go, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, he's always at work. He never sleeps. Yeah. And even if you do nothing, I mean, what's what's the um, what's the alternative to waiting for, on him? You, you you're not going anywhere anyway. <laughs> you know, this, you might make some wrong decisions, but um, you know, stay stay connected to the Lord like the plant. Because yeah, you're gonna feel withered away, and you're gonna feel you're gonna it's gonna be worse for you. It's gonna be worse for you if you don't stay connected to the Lord. Well, what else do we have to do? I, I you know, and I think we, I think we want to. I think we oh, want yeah. to stay connected to Him, but sometimes we just, we don't know what to do with all those feelings, right? We right. don't know what to do with all the emotions, and we don't know what to do with all the anxiousness that we have in our spirit. And so, so God will come, and He'll even like yesterday. He even just in a moment, one moment, it's like everything felt perfect. It, it was like it's gonna be okay. God's got this, you know. So mm-hmm. it's it's that's the great thing about God. God's got this, and so excuse me. So I just I'm just hoping that we can pray for people today who have issues, who who feel like um, like things are, are difficult, you know. Um, it's it's going to be okay. It will really be okay. God has this. Okay. Anyway, I, I don't want to beat that horse up again, but we should pray about that today. Is one of the things I want to pray about. For those of you, and so, um, you know, we can't see. Obviously, you you can see us. We all know that, but um, no duh, Pastor, right? But you know, just raise your hand or do something while we're praying today, and, and we'll pray for you. God sees your hand, and you know, just make a gesture. God knows your heart. You know, I mean, you know, we don't even have to raise our hand, but maybe for you, you might want to just raise your hand and say, you know, I need you to pray for me today, Pastor. And I'm not seeing you, but God's seeing you, and mm-hmm. so when we pray, God will touch you and. And he'll give you what you need to walk through what you're walking through. And there will be a moment, there will be a moment that he will come and he will touch you. And that's what I feel like, you know, when we read all those passages about Jesus coming and touching the leper or whatever. That's what I feel like he's doing with us at those moments. He's just coming down and laying his hand on us and saying, don't worry, son, I got this. I got this. 
And that's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. Circumstances are not changed. Okay. In fact, they may even be worse. But, you know, it's okay. I got this. I got this. Right. You know. So yeah, it's, I, it's God's peace. It's that yeah. point of contact. Yeah. 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 So I've learned a lot more about that since Billy and I have been doing this uh, because we've been reading a lot more about right. it. So, yeah. Billy and I were talking about how this has been good for us. I mean, we've learned some things. Like yesterday, right. we learned some things. And, yeah. And, when you yeah. teach something together rather than individually, then, you know, it's a cord of three strands. That's from Ecclesiastes, yeah. where, you know, it's a two are better than one. And that's why we have a brotherhood, and that's why we go to church, and that's why we do this, is so that you cannot be alone. And let's see, can we pray for our schools and our children and parents, yeah, please? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can, Sandra. That's a tough one, isn't it? My kids are struggling in school, too. I mean, you know, sometimes I, I just had a talk with the school this morning, as a matter of fact. Um, it, it's hard for kids to learn online. Um, I, I heard in some statistic, a statistic in L.A. that 80-plus percent are not doing well. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of kids. That's 80-plus percent. That's a lot of kids. That's a lot of kids not doing well. Well, well, well Billy knows this. Probably 20% of your students, as you were teaching, were doing really, really well. But yeah, it wasn't more than that. Well, twenty percent would do well no matter what. They yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I mean. They, those are the ones who are doing well and doing well in this. The rest of them, yeah, they, not need, they so need, much. They need scaffolds. They need to be propped up. Yeah, and so I've I've always been against this, against this, you know that not going to school because I just I just my heart breaks for those kids who, who are so marginalized already. And now it's even more. It's even worse now. So yes, we'll pray for them. And yeah, the social interactions they're missing. And well, yeah, we talked about that before, right? Most yeah. lots of the learning doesn't come from the teacher. Lots of learning comes from the students interacting. So right, yeah, yeah. We know someone who's they've been out on the road for almost a month, and they're supposed to be homeschooling, and they have a four-year-old. And the four-year-old, the mother said she hasn't done anything with him, you know. And Luann was encouraging them, saying. This four-year-old is going to remember this month with family and right, traveling right, right. and going to see the uh, monuments or whatever. Whatever yeah, they yeah, went yeah, to see. Yeah. Far more than any school. We think school is some sort of answer. School is not for everybody. Sitting right. at a desk for eight hours is not for everybody. Right. We've made it that way, but yeah. it's not. So there's many, many more experiences where God teaches us uh, during our day. So, yeah. But you're right. The school itself is, uh, it's, you know, they're doing the best they can, I'm sure, but... Uh, Maybe God's using this because what the school wants to teach, especially in California, are some of these agendas that would not be good for kids, especially the younger ones. No, the, the, I believe that's true. Keeping I, them out of the classroom yeah. is a good thing right now. Well, we've seen that across the country. We've seen reports to that where parents have been watching what the, t the, the, the teachers are teaching, and it's like, wow, what, you're teaching my kid that stuff? Yeah, the know, curric so? some of the curriculum yeah. on... Uh, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, and people are pulling kids out of school anyway, yeah. right. even if school's in. Right. So we have to find a better way to teach our kids in, uh, you know, and, and the traditional ways are, are, are of everything are going to be um, going to be challenged. questioned and yeah. challenged. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? Kids getting out of school, they got $150,000 worth of school loans after they get done with college and they don't have a job. It's like, this right. is crazy. Mm -hmm. How do you want to start out life with, you know, $100,000 in loans? I mean, it's not even 50000 That's a lot of money. Yep. That's a lot of money. And, it, and those, those kids have to, have to figure that out. That's tough. That's tough. So there's got to be a different way for us to figure out how to help our kids. And it can't all be sitting in chairs because not every kid learns well like that. No. You know. In fact, you know, they, they even, they've tried stuff, like even putting those big workout balls underneath kids. Remember that? They tried that. So oh, they, in the 70s, they tried yeah, all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah. They said open oh. classrooms where you can oh, pick yeah. the class you want to go to. And yeah. They've tried, the, the fact that they try everything shows you they don't know. Well, that's where, the, well, I was in, in high school in the 70s. That's why when I got out of high school, I got straight A's and I couldn't read. <laughs> that's the stupidest thing you ever heard. Yeah. Yeah, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, right? Mm -hmm. And I I mean, how did you pass, well, I passed Spanish class. I don't know why I passed Spanish class. Probably because I spoke a little bit of Spanish with my dad. But other than that. Well, the teacher liked you. But yeah, they, they, yeah, they yeah. move people on is what they yeah. do. But with A's, I mean, I got an academic scholarship to college. Honestly, I did. And a sports scholarship to college. I got two scholarships to college. But guess what? I couldn't read. How in the world do you get an academic scholarship to college and you can't read? Isn't that the dumbest thing you've ever heard? It's just God was blessing me to go to school. But but still, it's just nuts, right? It's crazy. So anyway, so, yeah, so we have to change the way we do stuff for people, I think. Uh, so sorry to get into all that. Anything else you want to pray for today, Pastor? No, that's good. We're good. Um, 
Yeah. You want to start? Want me to start? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll start. Okay. Father, we thank you so much. And I, I, first of all, come to you with a grateful heart. Lord, I want to build an Ebenezer. I want to build a monument, Lord Jesus, that keeps reminding me of, of how you keep intersecting with my life. How you keep reaching down and touching me at times when I so desperately need your touch. I thank you, Father. Uh, I thank you for helping me. I thank you for letting me know that things are going to be all right. I thank you for giving me the understanding that you're still in control. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking all those anxious emotions and all those things that run deep within all of us. I thank you for taking all those and putting them in order for us so that we can, we can be calm, that we can be peaceful. We can have your joy, not our joy, but your joy in the midst of those difficulties. Father, I just want to praise you and thank you for doing all that for all of us. And I just I thank you for, for giving us again one more opportunity for us to recognize your hand on our life. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, right now. I don't I don't know how else to explain it except that your touch is there. I can't I but nothing changes. So if nothing changed and I'm different, then it had to be something that you did. So I thank you for that. And I just even I can't reason any other thing that it would be. So, Father, thank you for that. And I thank you that you will do that for those who are with us today, Father, for feeling like that plant that's all withered up. <laughs> Somebody said it looked like a tobacco plant. It's all withered up. So anyway, um, Lord, I just, I, just, I just thank you for that dark brown plant, Lord Jesus, that reminds us of what happens when we don't rely on you. And I thank you for that other plant that's beautiful with all the fruit on it, the peppers, and, and all the greenery that it has because it's been cared for and taken care of and Father, I pray that even when we feel like the plant that was without water, even when we feel that way, even when our anxiousness is there, that you, Lord God, are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. And you, Lord Jesus, will reach down and touch us. And in one moment, just one moment, it, 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 within a blink of an eye, we can understand that you're gonna, that you're, you've got this. You're going to take care of it, that we can trust you. And I thank you, God that you do that for us. And I pray that for every person. Father, we did ask earlier for people to raise their hands if they're raising their hands right now and they're saying, Father, I need your help. What, whoever they are and whoever listens to this in the future, Father, I pray that this prayer would go to that future time, that future point in time. And I pray, Lord, that this prayer will wash over them as well, that you, Lord Jesus, will deal with whatever it is their life is dealing with, that you will give them the assurance that you never fail that you're always faithful, that you love us more than we love ourselves, that you care about those that we care about even in a greater way than we care about them. And I just thank you, God, that you will do that, Father, even as we pray. You say, Lord, if we pray and not doubt, these things will happen. So, Father, I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you that these prayers today, this prayer will be answered in people's lives. Pray for this word. I pray for the people we said we would pray for. For all of them, Lord, I pray for your healing touch. I pray, God, that you would just take care of things the way that the way that only you can take care of things. And I thank you for that too, Jesus. We love you today. Can we just tell you we love you? Can we just tell you that you are our God and we are your people? We want to submit to you completely and fully with every fiber of our being. We thank you for that, Jesus. And we pray, Father, right now for the reading of your word. May your word, Lord God, not return void. May we learn new things like we did yesterday from an old story that we know much. But Lord, you gave us new understanding. Thank you for that. And we pray for that same thing to happen again today as Billy and I open the word together and read it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. <clears throat> yes, Lord, we lift these things up to you. And um, Lord, we want to we wanna say amen to you, that you are the same yesterday, today, forever. And so they talked about flattening uh, the curve and the COVID. We need, uh, Lord, I pray that we would flatten the curve in our relationship with you, that we wouldn't be so up and down, yes. that we would just uh, every day worship you and know that you're there. And our, of course, our circumstances are going to change. There's extreme things. The most extreme would be death. But even in the face of our death or the death of other people, Lord, I pray that we would worship you and we would not base it on our emotions, even though I know that's what we do. So help us to not worry. Help us to not rely on our emotions. Help us to um, cry out to you, you know, feel our emotions and everything, but always look to you in everything. And as we look to your word today, Lord, uh, you know, speak to us. Uh, help us to uh, 
Help us to mature in our Christianity. Help us to be, mm-hmm. uh, you know, past the elementary things and, and the questions. Yes, Lord. And, um, and, and I know we always have to trust and we always have to do that, Lord. But mm-hmm. we, your word is so strong. It's such an anchor to our soul. Help us to, that, and that anchor means it holds us fixed, in a, like, a, like the North Star, a fixed position. Yes, Help us to stay fixed in our position with you. And then we can speak into other people's lives instead of um, drooping away like a plant. And so, Lord, uh, only you, only you have the power to do that. I, which these are just words; it's a prayer. But I do pray that for those listening mm-hmm. who have, who are a little up and down, or a little down and down, maybe even, mm-hmm. that Lord, they would be able to just get a bigger picture of who you are and how much you love them. Even we, we don't even know the height and depth mm-hmm. of your love. We, the, the scriptures say we how wide, how deep, and how far we can't know. But Lord, we can at least think about it. And so I pray that we would dwell on those things today as we open the scripture in Jesus' name. And then, oh, and I pray for the schools. schools. Yeah, sorry. I pray for the schools and the teachers and the parents. Um, you know, public school, the public education in America has always been, well, at least since the 50s, since, you know, Brown versus Board of Education has been a mess. And um, I pray that um, your hand would be on the people who have children in school and who have teachers they know by name and have struggles with academics or social issues or Zooming or whatever, Lord. Um, be the God of those situations, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, pray for the meal, and we didn't pray for the meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. How many times does that yeah. happen? Yeah, we start praying, thank you, God, for this food, and we go off and everything else and forget yeah, to pray that for the food, right? Everything, everything but the food. <laughs> mm. But yeah, so, Sandra, I think God heard our voices for that, for the children. So thank you for bringing that up. Anything else, if you guys feel like it as we're going through here, if you want to share, please do so. We want to want to take the time to minister to your needs um, as much as we want to read the Word today. So if there's something we can do, let us know. So we're, uh, we're Jesus. Yeah. He predicts Peter's dinner. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So this is one of my favorite conversations. Um, uh, it, it really is uh, this this whole passion story, but seen from the eyes of Peter, it's one of my favorite conversations. And so, Peter Peter is a, a very interesting fellow. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he he's the one of the he's the most dedicated probably, or as, there's no one dedicated more. Let's put it that way. More than he is. Yeah. He's the leader of the church in many, many ways. Um, Number one guy, basically. Yeah. He's, um, and he is the most impetuous guy on the planet. <laughs> he just, he's <laughs> capricious, which means he just flies off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just, you never know where he's going to go. Uh, he's he's pretty mature, you know, even as a, as the leader. He's, it, and I think that's amazing that God trusted because of the Holy Spirit, honestly, but God trusted the future of the church with one of the most immature guys out there. Yeah. <laughs> so I have hope for me. <laughs> That's what yeah, I'm he saying. Was, Peter's a guy who constantly trusted in his flesh. Yeah. Yeah. He made yeah. statements he couldn't. He, he wrote checks he couldn't cash. Yeah. So I I love Peter because I just do. He's he's so and I and I love the word because the word doesn't try to clean him up. It just you know he it is who he is who he is and that's the one of the other brilliant things about Jesus when he when he gave us the word is he didn't take all that humanity out he wanted you to see that it was there so that you would know how to deal with it in your own life and uh, that's one of the great things about about Peter so anyway um, <coughs> excuse me they had just sung a hymn. They had just finished the, uh, the the Last Supper. They mm-hmm. just sung a hymn, and they walked out to the Garden of Gethsemane, the Mount of Olives, the Garden of Gethsemane. They walked out there, and that's where we find ourselves in the story. You want to read it for us, verse okay. 31? Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written, I will, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Mm-hmm. But after I've been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Yeah, wow. <laughs> he just had a very intimate moment with them at this Lord's Supper, washing their feet. All those things happened. We we looked at thirteen, chapter thirteen of John. Looked right. at Luke, Luke's conversation of this. Um, he just had this wonderful, really wonderful moment with his disciples. They start walking out, and he says to the says that says to them, "Tonight, you will all fall away." <laughs> yep. 
you know, tonight you're all gonna fall away. Tonight you're gonna you're gonna disown me. Tonight you're gonna be scared. Tonight you're gonna see me as the sh as the shepherd, and when the shepherd's gone, the sheep will scatter. The wolves right. will come in, and and it's gonna be not fun tonight. It's interesting again how how Jesus just comes in and tells people that it's going to be like this. You know? This is um, this yeah. it's from Zechariah thirteen seven. Right. He leaves off a part. He stops because I'll I'll read you thirteen seven. Um, it says, "Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is my companion." Says the Lord of hosts, "Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered." And here's the part he left out. Then I will turn my hand against the little ones. So he didn't let him hear that part of it, you know, because the, and the hand is against the little ones, you know, right. against um, the disciples. The disciples, yeah, yeah. But you know, again, they're all they're all students of the Old Testament. Yeah, maybe they, knew that, maybe yeah. they understood it. I don't know, but they understood what he said. I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will, of the flock will be scattered. They they knew what that was about. They could not only imagine that from the word of God because it was they've heard it from the word, but they could know it because they've seen it. <laughs> yeah, and he's calling him. He's done this before. Yeah. He's calling himself the shepherd and right. the sheep. Yeah, no. and in Luke fills it out a little bit. Luke says that Jesus said, "But I've prayed for you yeah. that your faith should right. not fail, and when you've returned to me, strengthen your brethren." So right. that's problem. You know, that's what he said. He did. Yeah. Matthew's just so <laughs> straightforward here. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I appreciate Luke. I appreciate Luke putting in there the understanding that Jesus said, this is going to happen, but you're going to be okay. Yeah. He gives them an assurance in, in Luke. Here in Matthew, they don't, he, Matthew doesn't talk about that assurance. So maybe what you're hearing, maybe what you're hearing from Matthew is the kind of person Matthew is. <laughs> yeah. And he's not a big fan of Peter. Right. Or yeah. vice versa. Yeah, 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 yeah. They and both. Yeah, they, they're not, they're not, they're, from, di they're friends. from different worlds. <laughs> yeah. So, so Anyway. But I remember the time he told Peter, he goes, Satan wants to sift you like wheat, but I prayed that you right. would be strengthened. Right, by right. So right. God's always, like Rick said, God's always on our side. Right. Even if you don't hear the but I prayed for you, he's the advocate. He's standing right. in defense of us. Yeah. And, and I, think, I think probably the most important part, be, from, from a human perspective, we want, we want what Luke gives. We want the assurance that it's going to yeah. be okay. Uh -huh. Because our emotions, just like we talked about earlier today, I wanted God to touch me, and he did, and right. say it's going to be okay. So that's what Luke gives you. Because of, because of the human condition and because we can relate to other people, because we're all human beings, with, the, with how we are anxious about things, that's what we want. That's why we started giving trophies to every kid that won't play the sport. That's why, you know, that's why we, which I don't agree with. That's why we 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 do all that. That's why everybody gets a prize. You know, you come to the party and you bring a gift to somebody, but everybody goes home with a gift bag, so nobody feels bad. You know, and and we we have a problem with that these days. That some somebody isn't isn't uh, doesn't win a prize or doesn't get whatever or doesn't be isn't encouraged and. Because that because we're focused on this from a human perspective, but what's Jesus focused on here? I think I think Peter. I mean, excuse me. I think Matthew tells us really what Jesus is focused on here, and it says, "This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered." But then he says, "But after I have arisen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee." So. There's some kind of understanding there that right. they're still going to stay together because after he's risen, he will. They're going to meet up. They'll meet up. With. So he gives them that assurance that he's going to meet up with them again. But I think he wants them to know that, man, I, I'm not sugarcoating this. I'm I'm telling you, it's to, tonight's going to be a rough one. And, we're we're in a time now like yeah, that where yeah. many people are falling away. Right. It's the great apostasy. I don't know if this is the great apostasy, but Second Thessalonians talks about it. So the church is being rocked a little bit. Mm -hmm. They didn't strike the shepherd, but we're um, it's testing people's faith this time. I, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think I think COVID is testing people's faith, and it's because we can't meet together, and it's because people are stuck at home, and and you know people are really tired of being at home, <laughs> and yeah. people are scared. I, you know, I, I haven't been afraid of COVID. I haven't been afraid of that, and and thank the Lord for that. But I've watched what it does to people, and I'm very sad about the things that happen with people. But I think there are lots of people 
yeah, Christians included, who are very, very anxious and afraid of what's going on right now. Um, it's yeah, still, yeah. you know, honestly, I mean, you know, everyone knows what's happening with Deanna, and she's finally, she's gone to a pul pulmonary, she, a lot of blessings there. Right, right, right. But they're in the they don't know stage, basically. Right. And actually, right. someone in uh, Jeanette's women's group, someone who works with Jeanette, actually, and Luann knows this person, we've had him to our house, and, the, and we know that. Anyway, they went to Mexico and they got COVID. They went through a family thing. And his and the husband, his father, just died of yeah, COVID. Yeah. So yeah. So I, that's a real connection there. Um, they're struggling with. Right. And and so I think we feel, um, I think we feel we're and we're praying that God will protect us. But but man, if I think people are afraid, they're afraid of COVID itself. Yeah. And, 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 and I understand that you should be careful about that and wear masks. I think you should wear masks. However. Just go do some research about N95 masks. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't want to get into all that right now, but just go do some research. And and even though even the people that are the most protected are going to get COVID, our president got COVID. Um, Kamala Harris is, is people hit. with Biden got COVID. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. The, both um, both both of those people. And so and those guys are really protected. But right. you know, so it's 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 going to catch. We I said this a long time ago, and I believe it's true. Everybody's going to bump into it sometime. Well, professional so, athletes are getting it. Yeah, yeah, and they're in a bubble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how much yeah, more how, protected can you be? How can you? Yeah, and and you know, it's it's messing up team schedules and all kinds of things in the NFL. So yeah, yeah. So this so, challenges yeah. our faith, right? And we don't want to be like Peter, who right. says, "Oh, never." Yeah, I'll yeah. always really in three hours. You're gonna. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the story is that they're going to be scattered, but the way it relates to us is that there's a lot of things that are that are going to really, really push our buttons and mm -hmm. push us around, and we're in one of those times. And on November third, yeah. you know, and you agree with this. No matter, I don't care who, who wins. wins. Yeah. It's a problem. It's going to be a problem. It's not going to be good. Yes, yeah, COVID's not going to go away. And on November fourth, we're not going to say, "Oh, COVID left." No. <laughs> it, it might go away soon, but it's not. That's not going to be because of an election at all. And angry people aren't going to get less angry because well, of the result. I know. Well, I, see, that's part of the problem in our world today. Is is is, and I was going to bring that up. So thank you. That's part of the problem in our world today. Is it's not just the COVID, but it's all of the, all of the angst. The anxiety that we're feeling because of what's going on, um, like I don't know if you've heard or if, you, or if you've even seen, but at the end of that, uh, end of the confirmation hearing, um, Diane Feinstein gave a hug to um, oh, what's his name, the chairman of the, he's a Republican anyway. Um, they they gave each other a hug. Diane Feinstein's 80, 87. She's going to be 92 when her thing is over. Wow. She's a senator. She's been there a long time from California. Mm -hmm. But she gave a hug to him. And uh, and um, he, and he got COVID? No. <laughs> okay. No, but but people are calling for her to resign. Because, was it Mitch McConnell? Was everything? No, oh. no. It's the I'm not Lindsey Graham. Stuff. Oh, Lindsey Graham. It, she gave a, a hug to Lindsey Graham. But people are calling for her to resign because he's a Republican and she gave him a compliment saying, I think you did a good job running this meeting. And now what is... That's a good thing though. Yeah, well, but why are people calling for her to resign? I don't think that's a good thing at all. No, no. No, no. her comments I'm to saying, him. No, what she did was yeah, a good what thing. She, what she did is a good thing. Well, yes. there's a scripture yeah. that says what men will call evil good and good, good evil. evil. Right. So that was a good thing they're right. calling evil. Right, right. We're in the upside down world well, right now. Well, but that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's even that kind, of, that kind of thing and the attitudes that we're building against each other because we're on different sides of an aisle are ridiculous. As Christians, that cannot exist. You can't uh, see, but that's what I'm talking about. Those things bring anxiousness mm -hmm. to who we are as people. And so, look, the shepherd is risen from the from the dead. Okay, he he has not been he has not been taken away. We know where he is. He can touch your life. These people these people had an anxious moment, but it was only for a short period. Please understand that God knows when. In your life and in a country's life and in a, in a political cycle life, God knows when to make the changes that need to be changed. You just have to follow what he's telling you to do. Be strong in the middle of it all. And and they these guys learned this lesson that night, and they learned it very well. Maybe not that night, but they learned it when they got through it and looked back on it. 2020, haven't you heard that said? Yeah. 2020 is, is the best site. It's hindsight. It the best 50 site. days later at Pentecost. Yeah, yeah, right. 
So anyway, so that's enough of that. But I just I just want you to be encouraged today. I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will, then the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. <laughs> There's that little... And Jesus didn't say, oh, Peter, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, Thank you for that, Peter. Support. You're such a good guy. Wow, you're my Thank, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Jesus still speaks truth, right? Because he, what is Peter doing? Peter's doing that. He's concerned about the human side of it. We don't know how not to be, folks. He also thinks he's better, stronger than everyone else. Yeah, well, he probably does. Well, he does. But he that's, says even but, everyone else. But I that's know. the but that's the human side of it, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. Because we all we all think from the we can't help but think from a human perspective. And we can't We're imagine humans. falling. Yeah, yeah, right. Until we fall. So that's what he says. He says, "Yeah, if it, it doesn't matter what everybody else does, I'm not doing it." You know, right. and I'm sure he's forceful when he says it. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. So so Jesus knows the future. Even here, Jesus knows the future for Peter. And he, he, notice Peter's going to argue with God because he doesn't say, really? Peter said, even if I have to die with you, yeah, he's still, I'm not going to deny you. He's still making declarations and that He's writing are, these checks he can't cash. Yeah, Jesus doesn't yeah. say, "I don't want to argue this with you." you yeah. know? And but it, I like here that Matthew puts in, and so said all the disciples, "We'll die with you tonight." Yeah, 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 yeah. And by the way, the, the rooster crows, I guess, at three a.m. So it's a few hours away. This is this prophecy will come to pass. They yeah, will the, the, all scatter. Yeah, it's going to be a really short. Covered. It's going to be in, the, in that within that. The, you have to wait thousands of years comes, for this. Before prophecy. the sun comes up, it's going to happen. He says that, right? He says, "I tell you the truth, Jesus sent him this very night before the rooster before the rooster crows. You will disown me three times." So when the rooster sees the start of the sun and the rooster crows, so whenever that is, but right. it's not going to be long, and he's going to deny him three times before the rooster crows. So right. it's going to happen in a very short period. So just get ready for it. And then, but Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Well, it's the same kind of conversation. All the disciples follow one of the leaders. We've seen that before with Judas and the money and the mm -hmm. perfume, perfume and all right. that stuff. And now it's the same thing again. Peter's the mouthpiece and everybody's going along with it. You know, we're going to die. We'll die for you. You know, they're all excited. You know, they're, the testosterone's running great. And they're, <laughs> they think they're, they they're going to be, you know. You know, there's a there was a, um, a pastor before you, you know, 20 years ago in our church, and he was having some issues, and he got up and he talked about it, and someone stood up in the middle of him talking in the back and said, Pastor, I will never leave you. And um, you know where this story's going. <laughs> no idea. Well, I can imagine. Uh, Go ahead, yeah. Go ahead. Let's call him Peter. Yeah. <laughs> um, it wasn't, and, and it wasn't it was, the Peter. It's funny, that person, uh, very quickly, ne we never saw that person in church again. So it's like... And I don't know what the pastor thought. I know what I thought. It's like, I just don't hook my wagon to men at all. It's like, you know. Yeah, Billy doesn't even like me, so it's good. No, but it's just, <laughs> you know, we're supposed to, um, God's not a respecter of men. We're supposed to submit ourselves and this and that. But but when we, we're always going to be disappointed when we uh, try. Yeah. yeah, we're going to be disappointed. Yeah, look. And so try not to say that. I will never. Well, but you said that yesterday. Did you ask the question about sinfulness? Did you say, has anybody ever disappointed you? Wasn't that your question yeah, that you yeah. asked? And well, the answer is yes. Yeah. It doesn't matter who we are. We're going to disappoint someone, and they're going to disappoint us, and that's just the way it's going to be. You know. Here's where, here's a way to, um, you know, um, to put people in proper perspective. We think, you know, people want respect. There's cultures that say, yeah, respect yeah. me, and and yeah, we yeah. say, men want, women want love, men want respect. All right, great. I, res I respect you. Do you <laughs> okay. know who? Okay, do you great. know who doesn't respect <laughs> you? Cancer. Yeah, Cancer doesn't yeah, respect you. Yeah. I have a title. Don't you know who I am? I'm the Supreme Court judge. I'm the President of the United States. Uh, COVID didn't Does, care. Yeah, COVID doesn't care. Wind doesn't care. Earthquakes don't care. Tsunamis don't care. If Gravity a meteor hit the earth, <laughs> the things that don't you know who I am? Your title, unless you are, this is the only title that matters. Is I'm a child of God. I'm yeah. I'm connected to Jesus. That's the yeah. only one because so we want to lift people up and say I'm a lieutenant and I'm put all the buttons on you. It's like okay, I'll, I'll submit to that I guess, but I don't respect you because. You, when something happens, that when an earthquake or, or the water comes over, if if the world floods, you're done. Well, Jesus it floods yes, everybody. Yeah, Jesus says you don't be a, that that he is not a respecter of persons. It doesn't mean he doesn't love you. It doesn't well, mean he doesn't no, yes. care about you. And he didn't entrust himself because right. he knew what was in a man's heart. Right. What he means is that you're not more important than anybody else. But he did entrust right. his kingdom 
to, to us. Us. Yeah. So to Pete, like you said about Peter. Yeah. Oh, you know, he wouldn't yeah. entrust himself to Peter and say, well, I'm going to follow Peter. He never would do that. Right. He always followed the Father, which right. we should do. Right. But in these earthen vessels, he's given us uh, the, the kingdom, I which, mean, which, which is amazing. Is, which is a really crazy thing, if you ask me, right? I mean, I'd like... Because we're going to mess it up. Yes. By the way, this is the one that I like that Lindsay said. Um, if you could lose your salvation, who could keep it? <laughs> you can't even keep your keys. Yeah, I know you can't find your keys some days. You're right. You're right. But yeah, I know yeah, that's, yeah. that's a that's an awkward. It was, I said that's that's not the right conversation yeah, no, about but, that. But, but anyway. yeah, we're not reliable. Yeah, we we are so frail, and we're so we're coming to the sleeping in the garden. Yeah, and we're so driven by our emotional circumstances we're so driven by our angst and our anxiety we're so i mean gee, look you at peter. peter says i even if you die even if i have to die with you i'll die and then he goes to sleep I know. <laughs> so he says i'll be with you all the time and go it's like this guy in church he's like where'd you go where do you, where do you go you know? so yeah let's get to the sleep thing because i know rick wants to talk about the sleeping giant well 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 maybe anyway i don't but okay. right, well, we can't be yeah that's fine. how we're asleep now. yeah yeah so anyway then jesus went with his disciples to a place called gethsemane and he said to them sit here while i go over there and pray so when he said he sat here it did he, did he wasn't saying to them don't pray with me he was just saying i need to go by myself for a minute but he did take people to pray because well they get in trouble for sleeping with right, him but right he, he, yeah he, he takes he always he, he doesn't make circle. church bigger he makes it smaller he he has an inner circle that he takes with him. yes and it's not about it's not about making church big or small it's about he's he, these three people are his there's trusted people but he does that on purpose he takes peter james and john all the time why because those three people become some of the greatest leaders of the New Testament church. And so he wants the other people to see that he's putting his trust and faith in them so that they will follow him when he leaves. So, uh, but, it's, but he's got an inner circle. Yeah. And his inner circle is those three guys. It's well, and, about and leadership. And I'm going to say, you have an inner circle, too. Yeah. Those of you listening, yeah, yeah. the church yeah, yeah, lives yeah, in yeah, you. Yeah, 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 you yeah. have an inner circle, too. Yeah, we all do. We all have a certain group of people that we have some influence that you with. And you share things with them, and, yeah. and, you, and you speak into their lives, and, and, yeah. and you're having church when that happens. Yeah. That's what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. perfect. Anyway, this so, is... yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I didn't. No, that. I wasn't about the big church. No, I'm just I, saying I that people think if, if I don't go to a building, I don't. I can't meet God. Well, yeah, that's ridiculous because you are the church. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the the building is just a building until you show up, and that's why you need to be mature so yeah. you can be the church when you walk into people's lives. Look, look. A gymnasium when you go to a basketball game is the church now when church. you show yeah. up because you might talk to the guy next to you about Jesus. Yeah, because you're because you're the church, so the church showed up. So the, just just know that, yeah. So I appreciate that. Anyway, let's start over again. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, "Sit here while I go over there and pray." And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that's James and John, right. along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Um, this this has always troubled me a bit, to be honest, because. Jesus says, be anxious for nothing. So does it mean that you shouldn't have an emotional response to anything when it says be anxious for nothing? No, it doesn't. What it means is, is that you trust God through your anxiety. It doesn't mean, when it says don't worry, what it means is you don't have to think that there's not an answer. That's what it means when it says do not worry. There is an answer. The answer is Christ. So even Jesus shows us that the anxiety of our life can be overwhelming. And, and he shows you that here. Watch. So he took the, to Peter and the two sons of, of Zebedee. <coughs> and it says, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. However you say that word. <laughs> yeah. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Oh, my goodness. You think you have troubles? Mm -hmm. You think you think you see it's okay for us as human beings because Jesus was fully human and he shows it here. It's okay for us to be anxious and have angst over things that are difficult in our lives. But being being emo having an emotional response to an issue in your life is not the same thing as worrying. Worrying is when you say 
I guess I don't have any place to go. I guess I don't have any solution to my problem. Yeah, what will I do? Yeah, what will I do? That's worry. So, so Jesus knows what's going to happen. He knows what's going to happen, which causes him to worry, but doesn't cause him, I mean, which causes him to be anxious, but doesn't cause him to worry right. because he knows the end. Right, yeah, he's, he's sorrowful and distressed. How would you expect him to be? At yeah, this point? right, right. There's a normal. So, so when we talk about you know just trust God, it doesn't mean that you don't have this emotional response to things in your life. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you stop being human. Okay, so I really want people to get that because sometimes people. Well, yeah, get I guess what you're idea. saying is like someone will say to you, "I'm very, very sad." Yeah. Well, trust God. Well, I'm well, still sad. It's okay to be still sad. Yeah, trust yeah. God in your sadness. That's yeah, the point. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yes. not a pill you take to be unsad. Yeah. That's the thing you shouldn't do. You, know, <laughs> you shouldn't be taking pills to be unsaid. That's yeah, so you say yeah, you're yeah. sad, and you and we say trust God, and you say, but I'm still sad. We didn't say God's going to make you less sad. We said that God's going to be alongside you in your sadness. So, so what causes you to deal with that anxiety is this, is you know there's a solution. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Like yesterday, I, I was still anxious about things, but I was praying, and I was asking God, and all of a sudden... God said, peace about it. I'm going to, it's going to be okay. I felt perfect. I felt perfect. The reason I keep saying that is because I want to talk about this anxiety thing. I felt perfect. I felt like, th- I felt, I felt emotionally great. I felt physically great. Well, you I, felt it, better than it, yeah. perfect. I mean, you were anxious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would be happy if we went from anxious to just neutral. Calm. Neutral. Yeah, <laughs> neutral. Calm. But yeah. you went way above yes, to like, yes, oh, yes, life yes. is life yes. is not just it's neutral. Awesome. It's awesome. You yeah. went to like, you know. Yeah, so that's what I'm talking about. But but that's what happens with Jesus. But he has to go through hell on earth. Well, what he's doing, he's taking on all of our angst. This is what he yeah. does for he us. He takes on all our angst. He yes. takes on our sin. In one he, drink. In one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but think about this. I, I have a hard enough time dealing with the with the problems of my own nuclear family. Right, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, my 10 own, people. Whatever. Yeah, whatever it is, you know, whatever my own little family is, I have a hard time dealing with all their... Think about taking on every sin of every person that ever lived and or ever will, will live. live. Yeah. Yes, yeah. right? At one moment in your life. That's yeah. that's what that's what he was anxious about the beating he was going to take i'm sure of that he who wouldn't be right but he was i think he was way more anxious about the sin that he would have to endure how do you take a sinless man and dump every sin that's ever he never experienced him? sin yeah but he saw we, well he, he saw it yeah but at least we if you added a sin to me, I'd say, oh, I recognize that and that and that yeah, and that, yeah, yeah. but he didn't. It was, uh, he, he knew He knew the consequences of sin. He knew they were death. He, he saw what he it did to people. He was tempted by it. He was tempted by it, but never participated with right. it. Never had an act of sin in his he life. was never stained by sin. Yeah, and he didn't, wasn't born into sin because his father wasn't a man. Right. His father was God. So that's why he was sinless. So he's going to take all of our sin. So no, he's going to be anxious. So, but again, he's the, well, he's the unblemished yeah. lamb. Yes, and he's going to be blemished more than any of us ever are. Yes, yes. And his blood. We know now that the father. You have the blood of your father. You know your father. Whatever right, type right, you right, are. Right, right. So his father's God. So that's why his blood that bleeds somehow has a, um, a healing effect on us. It's a, it's it's yeah it's un, it's it's un, it the blood of know. Jesus the blood what? of Jesus is is a key for <laughs> everything for yeah. every by his stripes you are healed mm-hmm. right okay so my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow so not just not just I feel sad my soul is overwhelmed it's like it's like oh it, it, you've been in those places right where you just are just ugh, right. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. So this is killing me. So when Jesus says, this is killing me, he means it. Right. He, it's, not a, it's not just, I mean, we say that, oh, this is killing me. You know, we stub our toe, oh, this, you know, whatever. Right. But this is really. Any discomfort for us. Yeah, any, yeah, there you go. Sometimes not even great Can you discomfort. turn the air on, I'm hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is killing me. <laughs> it's <laughs> too know. hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, that's a good, that's <laughs> true, right? Okay, stay here and keep watch with me. So he's asking them, please. Well, now he goes away alone. Right, Because right. He, wa- he takes his right. inner circle. And by the way, the James and John, John's the John you think it is. John wrote the book, book of John, John, first John, all that. James is not the James you think it is. He's just a character. I mean, right. he's he's a disciple, but he's right. not the James. Of the, he's not the bro- he's a, he's not John's the, he's John's brother. Right, right. And so he takes them, but then he says, "You then guys now stay here, yeah, right. 
He stayed and watched with me, and he and he goes a little farther. Right, he goes by himself because he has to be alone for a bit, but but he gives them something to do. He he tells them. See, now this is this is. Do you a, think he wants them to pray? He says, yes, watch. absolutely. Okay. Because yeah. he says you couldn't even pray for me with an hour. He says that to them. Right. So so yes, I think he gives them something. I think he wants them to pray. He wants them to watch with him. Yeah, watch. Yeah, watch. Which with is him. prayer. Which is that's a prayer conversation. And we've been talking about like last Sunday. You talked about being prepared. Watch, right. watch. Right, right. And right. the church right now is. Not exactly. Well, it's watching better than it was before COVID. Yeah, right? we hope. Yeah, yeah that's our like, hope, right? Yeah. So, but but he, look, this is your best friend, and he or she just told you that they were they were so full of sorrow that they felt like they were going to die. They were so full of angst and anxiety that they thought they were going to die. And you go, okay, and you fell asleep. Okay, I'm really sorry. You know, it kind of like you blew it off. Right. Right. Yes. And that's that's kind of what happens here. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Man, if you guys ever wanted to have a prayer, listen, friend, if you ever wanted a prayer in your life, this is it. Not my will be done, but thine be mm-hmm. done. If you ever wanted to know how to pray. Yeah, here's the Lord's Prayer. Flip this one out yeah. for that one. <laughs> yeah, this, this is the most... This is the most incredible, emotional, um, man, this is from the depth of a heart that is not teaching somebody how to pray, not saying, say these words. This is from the depth of the heart of God himself when he is full of anxiety over what needs to be taking place in the very near future. And it needs to take place. That's why he says, not my will, but thine be done. That's how it says it, and probably in yours. Not yes. Because yeah, that's how I memorized it was oh, in King okay. James. Not my will, but thine be done. You know, Father, if this is possible, may this cup pass from me, but not my will, but thine be done. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's your prayer. When you don't know what else to pray, when, you're, when your life is full of anxiety, when... when your angst when your when your blood pressure is going to pop when you know when just it's uh oh man not what I want but what you want please God not my will but thine be done that is the prayer of a person who is absolutely what did Jesus say in his life I never said a word I never did a thing except the Lord except the Father well, told, told yeah. me that's he had a relationship with the Father. He had a, and, and, and we're seeing the relationship now. Yeah, and that's what he wants for us. He wants us to have if that. If there's any other way, let the cup pass. Yeah. yeah, but he knows there's not, right? Because, I mean, he knows there's not, right? right. He's the one who built this. Right. <laughs> it's so, like he's going, guess what? I know that I know the end of the story, like somebody said the other day. It was really funny. Right. Yeah. <laughs> for the chosen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah. laughing. You, you laughed really loud. Yeah. It says, then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. This is what he says. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? Now, mine says and said to Peter. Does yours say that? Yeah. He asked Peter. Oh, Peter. Because yeah. Matthew's yeah. going to point out here he said it to Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He asked Peter. And Peter's the one who said, I'll die with you. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Watch and pray. Yep. So that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So what was the temptation that Jesus was telling them they might fall into that night? Well, running away and not coming back. The temptation wasn't running away because he already said they were going to do that. Right. But the temptation was after they had ran away to not come back. It was a tempt, and that's what we have to think about in our life when we're with God. We 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 understand this story, but I want to look at it from the human emotion side. It's like, man, here's a person I put my whole life. I put my life into his hands. He's dead because he hasn't been. He hasn't. He, he, you know, they beat him up. They put him on right. a cross. They took he him. Doesn't down. fight back. He doesn't fight back. They, Takes three years, three days, three days, and it three. It's a that would be the longest three days in human history if you were one of those disciples, right? You would be mad at you. Could you imagine the the, the self talk you would have? Mm-hmm. Man, what an idiot I was to follow that guy. You know, I yeah, mean, right. You know, Saturday had to be the worst day, of the, yeah. you know, the darkest day there was. I mean, yeah. if he rose on Sunday, but on yeah. Saturday they're like, no yeah. hope. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Well, yeah. we know that, but they didn't. No, they, <laughs> they they wanted to have faith, and I'm sure some did fall away. Yeah, yeah, but okay. not the disciples. Yeah, the just that that's that's one of the things 
that's why I want to talk about this a little bit because that's one of the things that is so amazing to me. Yeah, that how do they keep that together? They stayed together, did what they were told to do. They stayed together. Where were they when when all of this took place after Jesus was hung on a cross and put it? They were in an upper room, mm-hmm. and they were praying together. They were saying, Father, you know, God, they, they still had a relationship, and they still had an Old Testament relationship with the Father. Father, where are you? Why is this going on? I mean, right. can you imagine all the questions? Do you think we have questions about things? Can you imagine the anxiety that they were feeling in that upper room? And and then Mary, they probably thought the Pharisees, oh, they were right. They knew more than us. You know, we should go back to the temple, or whatever. Yeah. Well, Peter went back to fishing. Right. Peter. Yeah, he did. He left in in three days. <laughs> and they were told to go to Galilee and meet him on that mountain. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 So anyway. This is tough. This is tough. This is a really tough time. And it says, Then he returned to his disciples. Couldn't you keep watch with me? Couldn't you pray for me with one hour? Then verse 42, He went away a second time and prayed. So he was there an hour. He prayed for an hour. Can't you stay awake and pray with me for an hour? Then he goes away. My father, if it is not, po- if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Uh, there, a second time. Yeah, but this time it's more... Yeah, forceful. Like this time he knows. Yeah, yeah, this time he knows he's got to do this. So people would ask, "Well, did Jesus have uh, doubts? Well, did not. No, did, could Jesus have walked away? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how he could have, but did, but he had free will like everybody else. Could have Jesus moved? Yeah, but he but he wasn't going to. Well, it's the other he, thing. Can we change God's mind with prayer? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Bible seems to say so, especially in the Old Testament. So yeah. you know, whatever. When he came back, he again found them sleeping. Man, they must have been a tired boys, right? Because their eyes were heavy, so he left them and went away once more, and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. So, and I've got to say that there, there is, you know, with them being asleep, like what are you doing sleeping? But it, and it is late. I'm, of course, it's late. But when there's stress, have you ever noticed how you get tired when there's stress yeah. around? And yeah. you're, you know, some people live, it, it fires them up, but. Stress can tire you out sometimes. And yeah. I don't. I think the enemy was in the garden there too. Yeah. So he goes three times to pray. Now, I think that's very significant. <laughs> what does Jesus do? He keeps going back to pray. He keeps going back to connect with his Father. He keeps going back. In, in, and he knows this is going on. He, you know, not my will, but but I be done. If this cup can be taken away, please let it. But I know I can't do that, so I, I'm going to go through this. And can you imagine this conversation? But he goes back the third time, and we know what he prays because it says that he prayed the same Thank thing. Right, yeah. So we know it's in that same conversation that he has that prayer. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, "Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise." Let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Wow. So he really was alone in the garden. He was really alone in the garden. He was he was not alone physically because his friends were nearby. And the father was with him. The father was with him. And sometimes you feel alone in yeah. your troubles and yeah. this and that, but you're not. Because you, you feel alone because... Your friends well, won't call you, or they they fall asleep on you, or they drop the ball. Or sometimes we don't even have friends. I know, or we don't have friends. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes we don't. You know, I think one of the greatest tragedies in our world today is that we're so alone. Yeah. And this COVID is making us more yeah. feel more alone. Yeah, yeah. And 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 really, honestly, there are lots of us that don't have lots of friends, that don't have many friends at all. I've I've been one of those people my whole life. I probably have. You know. I've, had acquaintances, but mm-hmm. really true friends, that's hard to come by. Yeah. True friends are hard to come by. I, I, I remember once reading someone, I don't even remember where I read it now, but they said well, most people couldn't even find six people that they really loved and knew that were their really good friends to carry their coffin at their, at their funeral. Well, that's probably true. You know, we, we just put somebody in there, but <laughs> were they really good friends? You right. Know? You know, um, so most of us probably couldn't find six people that would do that for us. So, I don't know. Um, the thing is that you are never alone. Thank you, Billy, for that. You're never by yourself. In anxious moments and the anxieties of life, just keep going back to God. Look, nothing that we that I've ever experienced, no matter how hard or rough or tough, or I mean, 
and you know, even molesting and things like that. Nothing I've ever experienced could even come close to matching what Jesus is experiencing here. Really, it can't. The, this this anxiety, I mean, this this anxiety that he felt, this this angst of life, this this purpose that he would, had come to fulfill, this um, this thing that he was going to do was was so hard. <laughs> it, and that isn't even described. I, there's no words to describe the difficulty of that of what he was about to no. accomplish. Unprecedented. Yeah, it, yeah, it is unprecedented. There, there's where the true, the, the, the true unprecedented. Yeah, that's the, that's where the word really has meaning, probably. But, you know, but what did he keep doing? He kept going back to the Father, back to the Father, back to the Father. So this is a really good story about Jesus's life but it has but Jesus Jesus's life never stops teaching us how to deal with our life yep and that's the good part of this yes it becomes a teacher a living parable right. for us to understand how to live life in the middle of those anxious moments yeah look yeah this is a good study today God bless you and uh, thank you for being with us you're his favorite remember keep going back to him see you Sunday oh, yes. morning. Sunday at 10. Sunday at 10. I was going to say tomorrow. <laughs> I, 